straight off the bat. And then we go from there. And Kamarad. I'm going to say that's Kamarad. Thank you for the follow, my guy. Prepare for battle. Draw your swords! So Chocolate Paladin's starting off with a lot of Berserkers straight off the bat. They've got a couple of sets of cavalry as well. So fairly fast moving unit. Um, Triarchy with the attackers have got basically all Berserkers as well. My gut feelings telling me that Chocolate Paladin's going to sally you. I suppose we'll see if they all start right behind day. But they've got a lot of fast moving units there as the defending team. Um, they've got what, four short swords as well, a long sword, two moles, a couple of pole axes, a couple of jewel blades, a couple of pikes. They've got a lot of killing power. Got more killing power than Triarchy does. Triarchy have got a big chunk of short swords, three moles, a long sword. I think having DPS heroes on a CBL league where you can only die three times is actually the way to go. Because getting the hero kills off is absolutely huge on this. I can understand, like, maybe bringing more short swords because you're thinking we're less apologies we're less likely to die but having that bit of extra dps is going to be going to possibly be deciding factor in this fight we'll see um ripcats is actually playing pike okay i thought he would have been playing jewel blade man he's a very good jewel blade player right let's get into the air as soon as we can and let's see if these guys are going to sally or not They are. Oh, yeah. So let's see how Triarchy deal with the Sally. Have they got a Treb going? They do have a Treb going. So they've reacted a lot quicker than the other two teams. That has landed slap bang in the middle of all of that coming out. Uh, they're obviously not going to have killed loads of units, but they're going to have killed enough. They would have wounded a lot of stuff coming out of there as well. They've got guys on the resupply as well. They don't have any anti-cavalry. Um, and because Chocolate Paladins have put pressure up straight away on the thing, they can basically charge all over this with their cav. This is uh, this is absolutely ideal for Chocolate Paladins here. Triarchy were not ready for a sally out, and they just do not have the units to stop cavalry. Obviously, the the Berserkers in an, ex an extended fight are going to do work. That's a very good treb again. It's very even so far though. So even though Chocolate Paladins have caught them out and have got cavalry, and Triarchy don't have anti-cav units so far. The Berserkers are doing pretty well. It's still very even death-wise. Blake's getting in the back here to stop the, the Hawatcha from firing. They are now taking control of the supply. Units-wise, like kills and deaths, it's very similar still. It looks like slowly that Chocolate Paladins are winning the fight on the supply. Slowly, slowly winning the fight on supply. Um, a lot of... Both teams have lost a lot of heroes, though. Gonna zoom out a little bit, see if there's any like shenanigans going on anyway. So wine grows just on artillery here, try to be a pest and annoy things. Bubbles! Head is in your bad books and he knows why. <laughs> oh no. Right, so Chocolate Paladins are pulling back in. CB looks like he's gonna try stopping the gate. I don't know if that's a good idea because if they just turn around and kill him now, that's another death for the team. Uh, I'm going to check hero deaths now quick and then we'll check supply. So it's 10-7, 11-7. Uh, so very even so far. Triarchy are actually pushing straight through the gates. They didn't get any of the towers in, but they've got enough guys in to, to stop the gate being closed. They've got cavalry in the back here ruining, is that javelins? No, that's palace guards. Uh, Grey area retreating as well. They can maybe kill some of them whilst they're retreating. That's going to be a nice... Libal's pushing up. I don't know if he should be pushing this far, though. I'm going to treat Midji's just spawned with his own palace guards. He's going to be able to kill a lot of those cataphracts. There's more cavalry coming from behind, though. Okay. Right, so Winegrove's climbing up here. Jordan's coming up the back. It looks like they're going to be able to start putting pressure on the A point. I actually wanted to check unit disparity. 225 lost for the defenders and 213 for the attackers. The defenders still have more units as well. But they do have more trash, so this is very interesting. So many Berserkers, is this the new Viking season? Garu, this is the new Viking season. Um, I would write to you, but I've got a three minute delay and there's a big fight going on, so I'm just going to speak.
good trap coming off there from the attackers. They do not have the, the hero and the units up on the wall to actually do anything about this. So they've got a lot of guys in the background going for the back resupply. Uh, but like Rich Panda is just going to be feeding kills. He needs to be running away as soon as he can. That treb could be good, but I don't know if the units are going to stay there. So the Cilladars have come back through. They've just been unlucky. Or they've been lucky that they didn't really get hit by it. DB's coming back through the back as well. A lot of the Triarchy guys are getting units out of the back here as well. Um, having that resupply is actually huge. If they can actually get A down, they're losing hit too many heroes though. 16 to 12. It's not a massive difference. It's only four, but... Wait, how many of the... They got a number of four guys on two deaths, though. And Chocolate Paladins have only got... Oh, no, they've got four guys on two deaths as well. So they've got both four players where if they die one more time, they're out of the match. So those players have to be on the ball. They're about to lose a Longsword down here as well, which is not good. Um, Cataphracts here are going to do work. IPG's pulling back there. Those Gunners are going to get shredded. Madawa aren't going to stop Cataphracts. Like, they've... It's good that they've got the resupply, but they need A, otherwise they can't progress the fight. Obviously, being able to kill Ripcats here with his Cataphracts is going to be good because it's just more hero deaths, but they need to start rotating up around here and getting a proper fight going up on the wall. They need A, otherwise they can't progress the fight. So, multiple of the guys from Chocolate Paladins are going to try and jump on the bound and get rid of him. Good shout, because getting the hero kills on the CBL League version is huge. Like, it's so important. So, he's... Libao's gone. Um, good Treb coming in there, possibly. They might be able to move out the way. Oh, that was brutal. That first one landed right in the middle of all of that. Unit-wise, Triarchy have lost more units than... than Chocolate Paladins have. They still don't have any of the towers in. They've got guys slowly, slowly climbing the walls here, but they're going to be... They're going to get pounded before they get up properly, I think. They're going to get just jumped on by so many different dudes. There's loads of units coming. The main push from Triarch is coming down this back slope now. Treb's been called in. Probably should have called it in at the top of the stairs, to be fair. Yeah, because then it wouldn't hit the battle elements. It still did work. Or maybe just literally aimed it here. Um, but these guys over here are dead now as well. They might try jumping off the wall, maybe. Oh. Colt 45 fell off as well. I think he's going to try getting straight up on the ladder. The mole's probably going to grab him, though. I think he tried grabbing and he went invisible at the same time. Ryaki got four minutes. We're going to check the hero disparity now. 1914. Uh, Syracuse or Syracarius is out of the fight. So, not good for Triarchy to have lost a player already. Um, they do have a good wedge of units up on the wall now, though. Um, if Chocolate Paladins would push, though, they do outnumber this. So, they could fairly easily get rid of this blob here. And they're now squeezing them from two sides. You've got a fight going on in the back supply as well, but Malleus, I think that's Malleus, the, the, is getting fought by Pringles and he's um, no Dachi. So if Pringles is Pike, he's probably going to beat him eventually. Oh no, Malleus beat him. His unit was there. Okay, I'll shut up. Chocolate Paladins are still in control of the point. Uh, avoided another Treb. Flames going off as well. Chocolate Paladins have rotated very well so far, man. Um... Triarchy are too often spread out and getting caught and they're just trading really poorly with the heroes. Especially on this map, like now, 23 to 15. Uh, Ripcats is out of the game as well, though. Sicarius is out still. So they're both on 14 players. But there's more players from Triarchy that if they die one more time, they're out of the fight. Uh, Unit-wise, 458 for the attacker, 664 for Chocolate Paladin. So Chocolate Paladins definitely have the advantage there. Triarchy need to group up as much as possible and get one big push off to grab A. Um, and hope that they do it in such a way that they don't lose too many units. The Longsword back here as well. Mike for Chocolate Paladins, healing up uh, or topping up the health of a, of a big blob of units. The Cavalry down is obviously completely useless for this A point fight. Um... So we've got Huskals here chanting for the attackers. Flames from the attackers could do actual work as well in this blob fight here. They've got shields set up as well to stop the back point. With palace guards and flames here, they're then probably going to struggle getting through there. But Chocolate Paladins completely outnumber the, the, the other flank and they're going to absolutely shred through as well. Look at, look at the blob come through. And because Triarchy weren't blobbed up enough... Like, Malleus is still in the back just doing doing things. 
that's going to be a good tread, but I think it's too little too late, man. 1 minute 40. Even if Triarchy would win this fight now, which they might do, they might not have enough time to actually get the cap off. Chocolate just needs to stay on the point. They don't actually... They don't need to win the fight anymore, if you know what I mean. They don't need to win the engagement outright. They just need to have heroes alive on point. Very scrappy fight. Stuck in from start to finish. But the plan that Chocolate Paladins brought to the table has definitely paid off, man. Definitely paid off. And now the, the hero disparity is just getting more and more and more. So 32 to 18. Like five, six players from Triarchy now completely out the fight. A um, couple of guys from Chocolate Paladins as well, but only two. So Ripcats and Lone Swordsman's out. Everybody else is still doing going strong. 40 seconds left though, and Triarchy's basically just been wiped. And uh, Chocolate Paladins didn't. If you saw the difference on that fight though, the whole time. Obviously at the beginning it was just blob on blob. Um, but every fight that happened after that, basically Chocolate Paladins always had more heroes and more units against less year heroes and less units of Triarchy. I think Triarchy tried um, cap capitalizing on the fact that the gate was open, but they like stre spread out and strung themselves out so that Chocolate Paladins could always just basically Zerg um, the Triarchy guys and then just start winning the hero trades like every fight they had. And then you get to a point like this where there's no time left and there's a, a good handful of Triarchy that can't spawn in anymore. The GG Chocolate Paladins, very, very nice defense there. Pringles with the MVP. Um, Rich Panda with the MVP for Triarchy though, 2, 3, 2, and 60 units. Um, didn't get any specialists though. Good wedge of damage taken though, to be fair. Malleus Invictus was the guy running around in the background uh, for, for a good chunk of the site as well. I'd, I mean, he got a lot of unit kills. He's gone 83 unit kills. I see five assists as well. It's pretty, pretty decent. But like, they were too spread out, man. Like, especially when when you when you've got this limitation on how many times you can die, you need to try and always ensure that you're winning the smaller fights, um, and killing the heroes. As we saw, it just gives you have, you have a team a huge advantage. And I, again, it was the same thing with sloth blockers. I don't know if they've got too many defensive heroes and they just do not have the killing power when they're when they're fighting against a team that's set up like this with a lot more dps in the, the setup rough 24 hounds i didn't realize houndsmen were on the field once <laughs> oh my days well played though both teams obviously gg chocolate paladins they've they've secured at least a draw um so this was the initial sally out as you can see it kind of was even, so both teams lost roughly the same. And then from that point onwards, basically, Chocolate Paladin lost lost the least amount of units until the very last fight, and then they, they lost more, but it was basically too late by that point. Um, they, they'd already won, and there's like a point where then more and more of the Triarchy heroes were just out of the fight completely, and it just made it easier uh, for Chocolate Paladins, because then they like could guarantee that they would always have the hero numbers at least, and uh, could just concentrate on killing heroes and went from there. So very nice.